Hey, Green Machine friends and fans of fun, we have a big announcement. We're going to be doing a cross-promotion with uh, Milky, that's MLKY, right? Yeah, MLKY. Uh, they're the boba drink place. You know how I love my boba. And uh, they're the upstairs one. It's upstairs and over there in the middle, like the mezzanine, I guess you could say. Uh, I always struggle with describing directions. Anyways, um, so if you take our receipts to their store anytime this month, you will get 20% 20, 20 off your purchase. And then if you take their receipt to our store anytime this month, you will get 10% off your purchase. Uh, it does not stack with other uh, discounts, so if you're one of our big tier subscribers, uh, it probably doesn't affect you. But you could still support Milky, because that would be nice to do. And you still get the Milky discount, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be all month. So swap receipts, get discounts type deal. Yeah, that's a good thing. Um, next we're gonna get to our books. It's honestly it was an amazing week for for books I think we were really light on Marvel books and and there was a reason some somehow Marvel like dropped the ball I think so we're sort of light on Marvel, but I think we did okay um, First book of the week though is DC and that is hell arisen year of the villain and if you don't know this this is <coughs> Apex Lex versus the Batman who laughs uh, really though we're getting his team fighting Apex Lex right now so the, uh, what are they called again? The uh, Infected. Yeah. The Infected. The 6-6, six, six, uh, I think is what it is. Right? The 6-6 six, six or the 6-something. Anyways, uh, was it good? Yes, it was amazing. Honestly, this might very well be the pick of the week. I had such a good time with this. More importantly, I found myself rooting for Lex again, which is weird because I'm really kind of mad at him over the, the Martian Manhunter stuff. But... Uh, that said, it was a really, really good fight. Um, the Batman Who Laughs, again, is just just the worst villain to have to fight. And it, it has Lex even tapping for new allies that are kind of unexpected. You're going to have to come see. So, anyways, you're the villain, Hell Arisen, Lex Luthor versus the Infected. Come pick this up. It was amazing. Next is Fantastic Four, and Yogi's going to put the main line up there because all I have is the X variant. Sorry, Yogi. Um, but this is, well, it's the Fantastic Four origin story, sort of. What we know about their origin story is a little different. It w it's not Reed Richards to blame for them getting bombarded by the cosmic radiation. So it's somebody else, and Ben Grimm's a bit pissed off and I can't blame him because he's been blaming Reed for years for his mutation and no someone else is to blame so this is honestly this is what we want from the Fantastic Four this is the family at their best this is the kind of like stories that I always want from the Fantastic Four and when they lose their way this is the stories we miss so this is an awesome read and if you aren't reading Fantastic Four right now, you really should jump in. Maybe not in this issue. Maybe go back an issue or two. But even if you did jump in this issue, I think you would have a really, really good time. There is just a heck of a fight in this. It's awesome. So uh, Marvel, yeah, yeah. If you're a Marvel fan, definitely come pick this up. If you're a DC fan, you want to dip your toes in some Marvel. That, that's a pretty good book to do it with. Next is Superman issue number 19. The truth has been revealed. He has admitted to the world that he is Clark Kent. And, well, his editor-in-chief, Perry, is a little mad that he's been lied to all this time. So he fires Clark Kent on the spot and hires Superman. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it, it, honestly, it was, it, it, that's, that's pretty much on par with Perry. Uh, we do get a preview in this that there is a new Superman book called Heroes Number 1 that will be coming that's spawning off of this. More importantly, the, the what is it, the United Federation of Planets? Star Trek? Yeah, the Space UN. Is it Star Trek? Yeah. Is that what, did, did I just cross that over? Whatever they're calling their Space UN, um, that is, is in effect, and they're, they're still trying to establish themselves, and that, that's been actually kind of fun. <coughs> and we get a pretty good fight in this, too. So, <clears throat> issue number 19, if you're a Superman fan, you will be totally happy with this issue. It's pretty darn good. And I, I don't know, I, I'm really, really touched with uh, the whole him admitting who he is. Now all he needs to do is get on Twitter and say, Bruce Wayne is Batman. 
No, that's injustice. So. <laughs> All right, next is Batman Detective Comics. This is Tomasi uh, Godolski and Baron. Last time we had a Norse Viking s character sort of attack in Gotham, and well, I do like these themes. I I think they get a lot of stuff wrong, and this is from having pagan friends. I'm not actually pagan. But uh, they say that um, sacrificing someone is a Yule annual tradition. I don't think it is. I think blot is once every seven years. I could be mistaken. Uh, on top of that, they call it a, a, well, a pagan, not a pagan cult, a Norse cult. Which, I mean, I guess it could be a Norse cult, but it seems like just a, a smack in the face to the pagans. That's just an easy target. Uh, now, did I have a good time with this story? I had an excellent time with this story. But again, I'm a Batman fanboy. Uh, I just think there are some discrepancies with it. But, you know, it's, it was a good read. The art is always amazing. E everything out of Detective Comics is always brilliant. So anyways, uh, Detective Comics issue number 1019. Come pick this up. It's good if you're a Batman fan. If you're a pagan, you might be a little bothered. Sorry. <clears throat> I I don't know if I'm getting over a cold or if my allergies are, are you know making a play for me already, but um, I'm doing my best. Next is oh man, we need to talk about this. So this is uh, Coates, Tanahisi Coates, Bodenheim, Akuna, and Garland. This is Black Panther, and this is the Intergalactic Empire of Wakanda. Now I've had some beef with this story, some some long-standing beef where I've been like I'm tired of the the space Black Panther saga, it seems like it's going on for a long time. And it, it kind of, <clears throat> there were at times where it felt like filler. I wasn't having the best time. Now, I had these same criticisms over the Captain America run by Tanahisi Coates. And he pulled that out of the fire in some amazing ways. Uh, I think a few issues back, more than a few issues back. Ever since the Steve Rogers stuff has taken off. Yeah. And I, I'm quite happy to be wrong here. Because this was amazing. Uh, as far as a space intergalactic battle and, and all the twists and turns that are going on, uh, uh, Nijaka, uh, you know, Killmonger, I can never pronounce that name. Uh, uh, Killmonger, he has a symbiote now, and it's like a very panther esque symbiote, I guess you could say, jaguar esque symbiote. Um, but it's, everything about this was awesome. I read it and I set it down and honestly, I wanted to read it again. It was that good. Uh, so yeah, I, for everyone who has been off of Black Panther because they've gotten tired of the intergalactic uh, battles and stuff like that, this one was awesome. Come pick it up. Next is Red Hood Outlaw and on the cover, yes, Artemis is back and it says kiss, kiss, bang, bang. And... Well, let's see. They had a kiss last time, right before Artemis and Bizarro got sucked into the portal and separated, and we lost part of the outlaws, which made me sad. And we've sort of followed Jason's redemption arc and everything else. But Artemis is back. So do they pick up where they left off and kiss again? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to spoil it. What I will say, one of the things that I will say that I love so much about this issue is, one, Bizarro has kind of found his center, and he's even meditating at times, which was nice to see. And two, once again, we got to address the fact that Red Arrow is dead, and Artemis did not know this, and they're coping. They're still coping. They've lost part of themselves. And it's good. It's beautiful. I like it. I, I, I've loved everything about this. More importantly, Jason Todd coping in a healthy way is weird. It's weird, but it's good. Uh, so issue number 42 of Red Hood and the Outlaws. Come pick this up. It's awesome. <coughs> the art, I, I don't know. I'm, who is the artist? This is Lobdell, Messina, and Locust. The art, at times, I'm really weirded out by the art. Uh, there are times where I like it, and there are times where I don't like it. And I think I've said this about this run before. It's, it's iffy for me, but... Next is a book whose art is amazing, and that is Wonder Twins, but... No duh, because it's the team of Russell and Bjorn, 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 Bjorn. I think it is Bjorn. Uh, this is the same team that did the Flintstones and Snagglepuss, I believe. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, there is so much to unpack... One, there is a computer in here that looks like a Macintosh SE that is 
trying to control the world, and he's called, like, Computer 86, I think it is? Yeah, C Colonel 86. He's got a little eye patch and stuff like that, and he's an old-timey computer that is an AI that is plugged into the world, and he's taking everything over. He's, computers don't belong in aircraft, so now aircraft are crashing. You, you, this doesn't need to happen because it's, it's too new. Fashion needs to go backwards because it just needs to get back to the 80s. Uh, yeah, yeah, all this stuff's happening. What sets him off the worst? Well, the fact that two dudes are in love. That bothered, he's like, he's like, what? Men loving men? What's going on here? So Colonel 86 is a little bit old fashioned and uh, it, it was pretty funny. I laughed hysterically. I, I don't know, I think part of me laughed really, really hard at it too because it's, it's the team that gave us Snagglepuss and that, that really heart-wrenching, touching story. And to see <laughs> that, that was the one thing that set off the, the old computer the most was, was the funniest thing. Um, so issue number 11 of the Wonder Twins, this whole run has been awesome. It's been really fun. It's a grander statement on society today, and I've had the best time with it. I'm going to be sad when it ends in one issue, so come pick this up. Next is issue number 6, and this is Batman and Superman and... My God, there is a lot to unpack. Now, we need to talk about this because the year of the villain has totally been about the villains. At the same time, I think it opened with Heroes in Crisis, right? Like, didn't it... it w was Heroes in Crisis just before? Uh, the event, yeah. It sort of led up to the year of the villain, though, right? And we, we learned a lot about the Trinity during that event because the big, big beginning of that event was them saying, Batman, you don't have recordings of anyone here at this center, like, that is recovering. And Batman's like, no. And w what that told us is that the Trinity has not been as close as it usually is. And that they're li not only lying to each other, but at times they're lying to the world. And that's, that's very out of character. And when they found out that there might be some people who are infected, who are sort of hiding it, both Superman and Batman played that close to the chest. Was that the right play? No, it wasn't the right play. You should be open with your league. You should tell them what's going on and so that they can be prepared. And so they, they didn't do that. And I think, I think, honestly, it was kind of a logical choice because would you tell them that some of them could be the enemy? Like, that would just make people paranoid. So I, I don't know. But they have a confrontation with Wonder... Well, they go to meet up with Wonder Woman who's having a confrontation with something else. <laughs> and... She's fighting other stuff, and I, I, I gotta tell you, both the art and the scene is great. Because at one point, Wonder Woman, like, leaps up while she's saying a one-liner and, and smashes something. And, you know, Superman's just sort of staring, but Batman's grinning. <laughs> I thought that was great. Um, but she points out that she's got the lasso of truth, and really, she tends to use it on people who are liars. But they haven't really been forthright with each other, so maybe she should use it on them. So she, she causes both of them to sort of look internally and say, yeah, we haven't been doing the right thing. And that's good. That, that's a lot of growth from these characters. Like, that, that is some good writing. So Williamson, Marquez, and Sanchez knocked it out of the park. And we're going to keep seeing these Batman Supermans. I think this is an ongoing. And I've just had an amazing time with it. It's been great. So come pick this up. <laughs> Next is Ghostbusters issue number one, and Yogi's also going to flash up the variant if he could, <coughs> because the variant shows Winston's first check, <laughs> and the checklist of what he believes, ESP, the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, uh, yeah, as long as there's a paycheck, I believe whatever you want me to believe. Do you believe in UFOs, astral projections, mental telepathy, ESP, clairvoyance, spirit photography, telekinetic movement, full trance mediums, the Loch Ness Monster, and the theory of Atlantis? Uh, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you say. Uh, so this, <clears throat> what are we getting this? This is a year one for Ghostbusters, which is weird, because year ones tend to be, what, DC things? Year ones and year zeros? But we get a year one for Ghostbusters. What does that entail? Well, you get a longer interview scene between Janine and Winston, which is awesome. You get his training, which was all of two days, and very, very simple. And Ray is very, very funny in this. Uh, it's, it's all the good Ghostbusters stuff you want. It, it really, really hits close to home. 
Uh, it feels like nostalgia, but we're getting more of that story, that story we know and love. It's great. It's honestly great. And I'm so glad they started with Winston because I Winston's a Marine vet. You know, he's a fellow veteran. He's he's a badass. I love Winston. So, uh, oh, okay. The, it's great. It's great. It's great. Come pick it up. It's awesome. Uh, issue number one. That's got to be where that mentality comes from. Like, I think I've done that. As long as there's a paycheck, it don't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's true, they, like, they take him out on his first case, and, like, they're like, oh, it's okay if you're scared, you know, like, we'll, we'll take you back, it's fine. He's like, scared. <laughs> oh, man, I loved it. Uh, so, uh, next is issue number six of The Marauders. Remember, with The Marauders, you're not just getting an X-Men tale, which is amazing, mind you, and... And has the usual Storm being a complete badass, which I, I love every single time. But you're also getting a pirate's tale. And it's a modern pirate's tale. They're cruising around in yachts at times. But Kitty Pride is quite possibly the best pirate outside of Jack Sparrow that I've ever known. And I, I gotta tell you, when, when people ask me who my favorite pirate is, I might just say Kate Pride. Like, like, yeah. like, I might honestly say that. Uh, so, anyways, Marauders, issue number six, it's awesome, it's amazing, it's really, really cool, I wanted, immediately wanted to know what was going to happen, uh, the art is always on point, this is, oh, pfft. of course, the writing is Jerry Duggan, of course it's amazing, it's written by Jerry Duggan, so Jerry Duggan, uh, Matteo Lully, Mario Del Panino, and, uh, Eric Arcianega, the art is so good. It feels so much like that House of X art, which was, who was that? It was Jesus Saez, I think yeah, it was. Yes, I am. Was it? Was it? Jesus Saez was Doctor Strange, I think. I can't remember who it was. I don't know. But whoever did the House of X art, like, I was really sad that they didn't continue on for most of the other X-Men books. But this one feels perfect. It's great. Okay, we're back. The next Come book we're going to cover is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy, issue number one. Now, that last Guardians of the Galaxy, you loved that, didn't you? It wasn't bad. I, I only read bits and pieces. I loved it. I mean, we had Cosmic Ghost Rider. We had Beta Ray Bill. Both those characters on a team sort of does it for me. But um, I think... I think what the mentality in, in this is that they're restarting because there is a new Guardians movie coming. So they wanted sort of a more traditional team. Now all of the original team, well I, I shouldn't say original because my god that's co covering a lot. But all of the team that's sort of well known from the MCU is alive and well, uh, including Drax, he's back. <coughs> but... <clears throat> Some of them are not going to be on this current team per se. It feels like they're taking some of the old team and some of the new team and putting it together. And I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, more importantly, I'm hoping with the new movie that they introduce some of these characters. Because that would be great to me. Um, what do you get with this though? You get a heck of a story. You get, I think it's a first appearance. I can't quite say for sure. But I don't particularly know the character. Do you know the character Marvel Boy? It's weird. His name is Novar, and uh, I don't really know this character, so forgive me if it's an older character and I just don't know. Uh, he details all his, his powers. He sounds pretty pompous when he introduces himself. He's wearing spandex shorts that don't look good. They look like a bad 90s biker gang. <laughs> Ten-speed biker gang. Uh, I, yeah, I, I didn't like this character when he was introduced. Um, <clears throat> gave it a few pages, and he said an amazing line when he took someone out. Uh, that was awesome. I, I loved it. I honestly had a good time with both that character and this book. There, there is so much adventure in this. I didn't think they could do it after that last run, which felt perfect to me, but they really knocked it out of the park. So if you want a good, good number one this week, Guardians of the Galaxy is a damn fine pick. Uh, next is Wonder Woman 750. Now, what do you get with this? Well, you get a wrap-up to the current story that is running in Wonder Woman, which is awesome. But if you know, when they hit these milestone comics, they do a big size comic. So this is a $10 comic, but it's a, essentially a trade paperback. You're going to get like four or five stories. I can't remember the exact number of stories. Maybe even more than that in this issue. There's a lot. Uh, more importantly, Wonder Woman's lasso gets kind of an upgrade, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, you know what you're going to get from this. You're going to get some Wonder Woman. You're going to get some Cheetah. You're going to get uh, just some good heartwarming stories. 
and plenty of butt kicking. So I had a really, really good time with this. But it's a 96 page giant book. It's a great deal. So come pick it up. Oh, and we have all the eras, don't we? Most of them. Most of the eras. Um, okay. Well, at any rate, uh, Atlantis Attacks is our next book. And this is Greg Pack. Oh, it's Pack. So, yeah, it's the same one who worked on uh, New Agents of Atlas. And I think it might be the actual team there. And, and, and Adino. Uh, and Indito, I'm sorry if I had struggled with names, uh, and Rosenberg, and this is, well, if you can't tell from the cover, this is New Agents of Atlas, and Namor having a fight. Uh, you know what? Guess what Namor's mad about? What do you think Atlantis is mad about, Yogi? Land dwellers? <laughs> Usually land dwellers. In this case, the nation of Pan has... Stolen the dragon. Where's my Dagrons? Where's my Dagons? Dagrons! What was that, uh, the mother of dragons? Yeah. There was that episode where she just ran around screaming, Where's my dragons? Legit screaming. What? You know what she reminded me of in that? Huh. Do you remember, uh, the TV show Lost when, uh, Walt, Walt lost his son? Oh, uh, I never He's like, that. Where's my son? He, like, ran around yelling it the whole time. It was like a whole season of him just screaming it. Uh, <laughs> he reminded me of the Mother of Dragons in that episode. It's weird. So, I, anyways, Namor's mad about dragons. He wants his dragon back. I, I don't know. That's a good excuse for a fight, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you get in this? Well, you get another Agents of Atlas comic. That's what it feels like. And it was awesome. The art is amazing. The storyline was great. Uh, this, I love this team. Um, plenty, plenty of action. Not enough silk butt kicking. I need a little more silk in this story, but it's okay. Uh, pretty darn good showing. So in issue number one, come pick this up if you uh, if you want more Agents of Atlas. Because I think that run's come to an end, hasn't it? Uh, I think so. Uh, next is Web of Venom, the Good Son, and well, I don't know who the Good Son is in this story. Dylan Brock. Are you ready for this? Mm. On the heels of absolute carnage, where carnage almost destroyed the world, and remember he destroyed the uh, the symbiote that was on uh, Norman Osborn, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And when he destroyed it, he apparently kept a piece of it. Why? He kept a piece of it, and he's realized he can control it, so he's just messing around with the symbiote. And what do you think kids do with a symbiote? Yeah, play with it. I don't know, put it in squirrels, raccoons, and stuff. <laughs> like, it's, it ain't right. <laughs> it's, it's not right at all. Yeah. And Dylan's kind of creeping me out. But what we do get in this comic that I love more of is Sleeper. Sleeper is honestly my favorite symbiote these days, so next to maybe Venom. Uh, and we get more of Sleeper. So, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, this is Thompson, Neves, Jr., Gideon, and Burrito. Come pick this up. Next is Batman Curse of the White Light, and oh my god, oh my god, the great reveal that they've been building towards. So what we know is we know that uh, Bakar was like an evil sort of crime boss in the early Gotham times, pirate kind of, and uh, he was hanging out with the Waynes, with uh, Edmund Wayne, and they went to sort of save Gotham by killing a vampire who was running the town named Lafayette, Laffy. And Laffy became the basis for Joker when he found the, the uh, lair of it. And he found some old dead bones, a body. Um, well, the twist is a hell of a twist. Honestly, it's amazing. The, this, I, I was floored by the, what happened in this story. Uh, again, this whole story is basically a giant fight between Azbats and, and Batman. So that's two Batman fighting, and it's, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. I've loved everything about this. So please, please come pick it up. Plus the art is, oh my god, to die for. I am absolutely buying this trade the second it comes out because it's so good. So yeah, come pick that up. Next is Kids, and I have the cool holographic cover, which is uh, just this the, the name. But that's still cool. Uh, if you don't know, that's the Goonies, I guess. It's the Goonies cover. Yeah. They have all types of movie variants. There's a Lost Boys variant. There's a what's Ghostbusters. The a Ghostbusters variant. There's a couple others. Yeah. But we've got a bunch of them. This story is kind of weird. It's about a bunch of kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, it's about a bunch of kids in a zombie apocalypse. 
And that's pretty much all we've got. They're just really good at killing zombies, and they like filming it and riding around on bikes and stuff like that. <laughs> <coughs> it felt like the kids from uh, the Goon uh -huh. that are running around the town. Like it felt and looked like it. The art looked like it too. I want to know if the artist was sort of inspired by that. Uh, this is uh, Duke and Ray. Jurette and Mengual and it's honestly it was great I had a pretty good well I don't want to say great great I'm gonna say it was a pretty good show uh, the reason being is the storyline mm, seemed a little shaky at times I wanted to know more about these, these characters wasn't too invested in them just yet but um, the art was amazing and I still had a pretty good time so if you want a little, I don't know, Goonies sort of feel for your zombie apocalypse. This is a good pick. <laughs> Who wants that? Like, whoever says, you know, let's just cross the Goonies with the zombie apocalypse. I don't think any of that, those words have ever been uttered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> next is, but it was good. Uh, next is John Constantine's Hellblazer. And yes, this is Simon Spurrier, Aaron Campbell, and Jordi Belair. This has been amazing and we're wrapping up the first arc first of all I was really happy I thought the kid was doing ASL in it because some of the signs are the same which is normal some of the signs are the same but the kid in the story is actually doing BSL which is British Sign Language it is a great representation of sign language in the story the character itself is not deaf the character is mute can't speak but I loved it as somebody who is in the deaf community my wife is deaf and I'm always at deaf events. I love this representation. More importantly, the art has been amazing. Like, I really love this level of grit, and I don't say that very often because I don't like gritty stuff, but it's perfect. It fits this perfect. It, it feels like a Constantine book should. Uh, the twists are great. The one-liners are still amazing. Uh, this is quality Constantine. This is what I want out of the character. Now keep in mind, I didn't like the rebirth run of Constantine. I didn't. I, I thought that was the worst of all the Constantine, the Hellblazer books I've ever read. Uh, this one, however, is amazing. Come pick it up. Next is Deja Thoris, and I. I need to. We need to discuss these dynamite covers, because. Like, the story inside is not like this. The story is rather tame, and it was a really, really good action story that has to sort of do with, well, uh, uh, I, I don't know, a fantasy sort of monarchy, a bit of action, uh, a giant monster type thing. It was a pretty good story. These covers make me blush. Like, I, <laughs> I feel very... Im like, I couldn't take this book home and, and read it in front of my wife. She would, she, she would look at me sideways. Um, but Dynamite loves doing that. This is Abnett, uh, Giorgio, Kelly, and Bullock. And I, I think collectors collect these just for the look of the covers at times. But the story itself is not reminiscent of this cover. Uh, I, I, I don't know if, that, if that's your jam or not your jam. You know, maybe one way or another. But uh, these covers make me blush a bit. Uh, it's still pretty good. I mean, if you like that, that sort of Red Sonia Dynamite stuff, then come pick it up. Next is, well, this is Joe Hill, Leo Max, and Dave Stewart, and it is Hill House Comics. Now, uh, I, don't you hate it when you come in possession of a magical Viking axe, and you gotta cut someone's head off because they're acting the fool, and then the head keeps talking? Well, that keeps happening to this poor gal in this story. She's cut off two heads, maybe going on three. She's just, she's having a bad night, keeps bumping into bad dudes, and, uh... You know, <laughs> she's she's an axe murderer that I'm kind of rooting for, and I think that's what Joe Hill was going for. So I had a great time with this. There's nothing to complain about with these uh, these Joe Hill Hill House comics, uh, which I was really hesitant about because they killed Vertigo to make Hill House comics, and yet I really really have had a good time with these. They felt very much like the horror comics of old. Granted, they're not split up into separate stories and short but sweet stories. But they're still really good. Like, they're great. So anyways, yeah, come pick this up. It's awesome if you like horror. Next is N.K. Jemison and Jamal Campbell. And this is Far Sector. Now, let me tell you. These are two people who are at the height of their game. N.K. Jemison is an amazing writer. If you haven't read her books, go pick them up. They're awesome. Uh, more importantly, she is just one of the best in the regular writing industry, the regular literary industry. So seeing her jump over to comics 
is awesome, and it shows. Like, the the aliens she's built in the story are three different factions, and they feel right. They feel like a culture that, that it makes sense, and I always want to know more about them. More importantly, the people are great, and the story between these people, like, if you're a cop, and you've got no backup, you're in the middle of space dealing with this other, other groups of aliens, and some of them want you to feel emotion, and some of them don't. Some find emotion dangerous. And what do you do? Like, that's, that's, that's the debate. Like, like, is it better to detach yourself and not hurt people? Or do you, should you be in touch with your emotions and sort of deal with all the baggage and sometimes danger that comes from that? And what do you do when one side goes too far? Like, do you, like, what do you do? And so it's, it's a great moral question. There's, there's so much back and forth. More importantly, we get to see the new Green Lantern belt belt out. And that's what I've been waiting to see. She's going to belt out soon. So it's awesome. Um, so that's what you get in the story. So N.K. Jemison, top of her game. Jamal Campbell. Jamal Campbell from Naomi, top of his game. This art is just the best. It is, I, I don't know, what would you compare it to? Uh, I always say the Rolls Royce of comics, but it feels better than that. Like, I, ah, oh, man. I, I don't know what to compare. Like, just, just compare it. Like, let's just say it's it's a Picasso. It's amazing. He's done so much with this work. It's just brilliant. I love everything N.K. Jemison though. And I'm, I know I'm going to hunt him down at a concert time and get him to sign some stuff. But my, I mean, did I say N.K. Jemison? Ha! I, I meant Jamal Campbell. I, I, Jamal Campbell's art is amazing. I love it. And I know I'm going to hunt him down at a concert time and get him to sign some stuff. And if I run into N.K. Jemison there, I'll get her to sign some stuff too. <laughs> it's, it's just awesome. So this is DC's Young Animal. And I hope this sticks around for a long time because I've just had the best time with Far Sector. <laughs> Next is Red Sonia Chaos. How are we doing on time? Uh, Age of Chaos, excuse me. And, well, I wanted to like this quite a bit. It's a number one. I didn't hate it, but I gotta tell you, the story seems all over the place. Granted, they're taking all of the characters from the... What do you call it? The Red Sonya verse? I'll go with that. Everyone they're, from her world. They're taking people... Well, they're taking people from the future timelines, too. Like, Eva Lerny is in this. Uh, Eva Lerny... Uh, what was her name? Shen... Shen... I can't remember her name. The gal with the mohawk. Oh, I, I, oh uh, Chastity. Chastity. Chastity's in it. Um... Obviously, the, the gal who runs Hell is in it because she's on the cover. And well, I wanted to like this, but it's kind of weird. What I will say about this is <clears throat> the evil wizard who is in Savage Avengers, who's basically Conan's, one of his arch nemesis, who summoned a marrow god, blood god, uh, Kulan Gath, that's his name, Kulan Gath. He makes an appearance in this, and everyone's after an artifact of his. So that's bad news. But uh, beyond that, it just, at times, the story sort of felt like a mess. I do want to know more. I do want to know more. The art was good. I, I had little to complain about the art. Um, it's, it is one of those dynamite comic covers that makes me blush. But uh, the story just, it felt a bit all over the place. I need to know more before I can tell you to fully commit to this. But if you need a number one from Dynamite and you, you're a fan of these kind of covers, come pick it up. Next is Excalibur, issue number six, and this is Howard, Toe, and Arcianega. Again, Excalibur is the fantasy version of the X-Men stories, and it wasn't the best. I didn't like the first couple, and I have fallen in love with it. I think that last issue was amazing. We saw Rogue uh, pretty much lay hands on Apocalypse and suddenly become... I, I think we were calling her Rogue Apocalypse, right? Because mm -hmm. she has, like, Apocalypse's look, and she's got some of his powers. But she's flying around, she's rogue. And that's dope. And we get to see her fight in this. And it was amazing. Uh, more importantly, I, I, it's just the wrapping up of an arc. But it was a really, really good arc. We get, we get some Captain Britain lore, which, you know, I, I'm a kind of a big fan of Captain Britain, but I like this direction they're going. And Apocalypse, well, he's probably not dead. <laughs> but I, I gotta tell you, Rogue... Being So here's the thing, if Rogue can take the powers of Apocalypse, take him, suck him dry, kill him, and he can be reborn, then she can do that with everyone. So she could become the most powerful, powerful, powerful mutant of all time. There's no cap. Yeah. There's no limit, right? It could be Omega Lover right there. And she's not 
technically killing. Well, she's killing them, but they're coming back. So that's wild. That's like Omega Ultra level. <laughs> Omega Ultra. Plus Ultra. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, yeah, it's great. It's wrapping up an arc, and if you like this X-Men fantasy stuff, come on, pick it up. It's pretty good. All right, our go or no-go list. This is going to be the fast suite. We're going to say like one or two things about it and go on to the next book. Uh, the Old Guard, Force Multiplied, awesome. There is uh, a little bit of spycraft, a little bit of assassination, um, a lot of action, and I, I think we get to see someone get keel-hauled on a yacht. So <laughs> that was kind of weird, but uh, pretty good. The art's a little too gritty for my taste, but pretty good. Come, come thumb through it and see if you like it. Captain Marvel, issue number 14. This is the Marvel X variant, but we should have the main line on the screen. Uh, this is awesome. More importantly, we get a, a symbiote in it that uh, looks familiar, and I'm hoping it's not him because I really like that symbiote. If you heard me talking earlier, you might know who we sort of think it is. But, uh, yeah, this has been Captain Marvel killing the Avengers and recloning them. It's been awesome so far. Next is Ruins of Ravencroft Dracula. This is Thierry Unzera Landini Rosenberg. Great. Really, really good showing. Didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. Uh, but we get a Dracula fight with some of the older, great team-up characters that we love. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, so it's Cap. You can tell it's Cap, and it might be a sidekick in there. So, yeah, come pick it up. Batman, issue number 87. This was great. There is new stuff. He has new gadgets, a new vehicle, a lot of fun stuff, and I don't know where they're going with it. The art's amazing. Come pick it up. Hardcore Reloaded. It seems like... The last time we reviewed Hardcore, it felt like months back, right? Seems like it was a lot of space between this. Maybe it's a different arc. Uh, it's the same thing. It's, it's assassins being able to get into other people's bodies. Mm, I, I don't know. I'm going to wait and see. Uh, honestly, I don't know. The art I was on the fence about, I, I'm going to say it's a no-go. Maybe don't start with this one. So I haven't been saying to go or no-go. Batman, go. <laughs> Runes of Ravencroft, go. Captain Marvel, go. Old Guard, go. No go is to this one. Sorry, I didn't like it. Vampire State Building, it's the wrap-up, but if you've been reading it, go. Shazam. Oh, and the wrap-up was pretty good. Uh, Shazam. This was wild. There... I, I don't know. Okay. If you know there's a character who, when he is incarcerated, tends to get naked, and if you know who that is, then you're going to probably want to pick this up. Because I don't know where they're going with it, but it certainly was uh, a shocker. Um, so, issue 10, Shazam, go. Vampirella. I, this was honestly a really, really cool story for Vampirella, and... A lot of, a decent amount of action. I had a good time. Go. Necessary Evil, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, really, really, really good time. I didn't think I'd be saying this after the, the Shattered Grid, but this storyline's pretty darn good. Uh, so go. And that's our show for this week. We're back for our drawing. It just magically appeared. Woo-woo. Um, okay, so uh, I should spin it once, right? What is this down here? I don't know. Okay. Huh. Kind of missed. All right. Spin it once. And we have 321. 321. Uh, Allie Fawcett. Allie Fawcett. You want to post it. 66. Or 99. I don't know. I think it's 66. Frank who? Frank who won a poster. Heck yeah. And 40. <coughs> Jacob Kleinheinz. Jacob Kleinheinz won a poster. And that's our show for this week. Uh, again, reminder, we are having a cross-promotion with Milky. You take our, your receipt there, uh, you will get a discount. You take their receipt here, you will get a discount. That's our show for this week. Do the dance. All right. <laughs>